and welcome everybody to um, this second session in February. We've got two in February because of the, the delayed one back in December. So uh, thank you for giving up your time on this Thursday evening. I hope it's a nicer day where you are than here in deepest, darkest Norfolk, where it's just been wet all day. Um, so it's much nicer to be indoors talking to you lot at, uh, for the next hour. Um, a lot of questions popping up about the resources button. I think if you are using the online version of Zoom rather than the app, then it might not be there. That seems to be what's happening. So I think uh, Nasaka is going to be putting a link, hopefully, um, is that correct, into um, a we tra or me transfer link, I think, into the chat box so you can you get it there we go she's done the event materials are there so you, those of you who haven't or can't find the resources button in the menu bar it is there um under the she's in bold put event materials and you can click on that link and get access to the resources and of course they will be online um in the usual place at the end and colin can, will tell us where that is which brings me to colin just to introduce colin as well colin leith the subject advisor for business studies who's popped his camera on now hi colin um colin will be very kindly answering all all of the questions in the chat so if you've got any questions um please do pop them in the chat and colin will do his best uh to answer them if he needs to stop me to at an appropriate point um to answer your question because he, he would like me my input then um that's what we'll do um okay some of you are struggling to get the resources if you got if you don't get them for the purposes of this training don't worry so much what i'll do is i'm going to resend them because obviously there are some examples that we're going to go through for the nine mark question um, and I, I promised I would share the, the, the title screen so that the people at LXL can um, categorize this easily when they know, so they see what training it is. So hopefully you are all in the right place here in the tackling the nine mark question training. We are going to go through some examples to nine mark questions, which are, and we're going to mark them and look at why they score certain uh, levels for certain skill areas. Um, I will obviously the annotated version that I uh, will will do during the session, I will then send to Pearson so that they can upload that as well, if you haven't got your copy. So don't worry if you haven't got your copy, you will um, still be able to access an annotated version at the end. Right. So what are we doing today? Quite obviously, the, the title of the um, webinar gives it away, tackling the nine mark question. And in doing so. Um, we are going to be looking at these three, uh, these things. So I will introduce, I've just realized very remiss of me. For those of you who don't know me, I haven't introduced myself. I will do in so in a second. Um, we're then going to look at what the, the best structure to a, uh, a response in the nine mark question is, what you need to include in a conclusion. And um, for me, the mo and, and, and they vary, it's very eloquently put by the principal examiner of paper one and the chief examiner who writes paper two. Um, if you've read their, if been to any of my webinars, I always say read their examiner's reports. They're so thorough. Um, and as I said in the last uh, webinar, way more thorough than any of the other exam boards for GCSE business studies. They give a lot of detail in those. And I'm, we're going to look at what they say about the nine mark question, just to back up everything that I'm saying as well. So you know that it's not just me making it up. And then I'm going to look at the common mistakes that people make. We'll look at the mark scheme and then we're going to look at the examples. And if we've got any time for questions at the end, then I'll be here till five o'clock to take any questions that you may have. So for those who don't know me, and maybe this is one of their first webinars, my name is Paul Clark. I am the assistant principal examiner for the GCSE um, paper, uh, paper two, I, I predominantly work on, although I've worked on paper one um, over the years as well. Um, okay, so let's get going. So this is um, my suggestion. Now, I'm very, I'm not going to say anything different than I've said over the last two years, if you've been here over the last two years and you've listened to any of, uh, of the times where we've talked about the structure to the nine mark question. Because even though we, we did a whole training, I did a video training session, which is available still, I believe, online about tackling the nine mark question. And, and we've done a webinar a couple of years ago on tackling the nine mark question, and we're doing it again today. Um, there still seems to be some confusion out there, particularly when I look on the, um, the, the LXL Facebook group, still seems to be some people getting confused as to how to um, 
get their students to answer the nine mark question. That's very evident when we come to market in the summer uh, and we see a lot of different approaches, um, some m- much more successful than others. Now, there are more than one way to answer. There is more than one way to answer this question. For me, the easiest way is to have a three paragraph approach and the three paragraph approach in doing so, we look at one of the options. You can get nine marks without addressing the second option, which makes it simpler for a for a student in order to access the marks. At this point, I must just apologize it, it, and double apologies if you were here on the 6th of February because I was coughing away on the 6th of February and it hasn't gone away. I've still got this this cough. So I, if I do go um, and, and just go on mute for a, a 30 seconds or so, it's because I'm just having a, a cough in the corner uh, so that you don't get too irritated with it. So the, the approach should be this. In the first paragraph, you should look at it and get your students. In my opinion, the easiest way is to get your students to look at an advantage of the option that they've chosen. And that paragraph should then be support or that that choice should be supported with three link strands of development as a minimum and with some context and application in there as well. Then in the second paragraph, you look at a drawback of the same option. Again, supported with three link strands. And the reason that I'm saying three and three is as we'll become, I'll talk about that when we look at the mark scheme in a minute. We then, in the third paragraph, need a sophisticated conclusion that uses sophisticated um, evaluative techniques, such as it depends on or comparing short and long term impacts. And it needs to bring in something new. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that when we look at the examiner's report and when we look at some of the examples. Now, can get nine marks in other ways, but it's much harder to do. Now, the, 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 the main one is where students look at an advantage of option one and an advantage of option two. That is, you can, it is possible to still get full marks by doing that. However, if they don't compare the relative, the, the relative strengths of those two advantages, then there won't be any evaluation in the answer. And therefore, they're not going to score anything for that. They're going to score level zero when we come to give them a a level for evaluation, which is going to mean the maximum they're going to get is six out of nine. And that's if everything else is done really well. It's well applied. And there's at least five link strands of development in the two arguments. Um, Now, that's a really hard skill for a 15 or 16 year old to do. It's much easier to look at an advantage and drawback and then to say why one of the arguments might be one of those two arguments is stronger. That's much easier to do um, than, a, than comparing the relative strength of two advantages. So I don't recommend that you get your students to use that approach. In the conclusion, as I've just said, um, we need to do really um, what it says on the screen there. So you, they need to give their why they think that option is the best, despite the drawback that they have uh, identified. Now, in doing so, they can't just simply repeat what they've already said. That's going to play a part of it, obviously. But we need to do more than that to get up to level three for evaluation um, in the response. It needs to say what it might depend on. You may, you don't have to say why it's better than the the other option, but that might be something that you could bring in that's new. It's a way of 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 saying something new. I'll just make it very clear. You don't have to do that to get up to nine marks out of nine, because you can get nine out of nine without mentioning the other option. Okay, so that's what we need to do. And uh, in terms of the structure, my recommended structure, um, in terms of uh, of how to uh, approach this particular question. Now, I'm just going to, I won't read it all out, but I'll pick out bits. And they actually say, um, Martin, who is the principal examiner for paper one, uh, and Jonathan, who's the chief examiner for the whole GCSE and is the uh, principal examiner for paper two, um, write very, very similar things. Although I think Jonathan puts it, uh, in, bit, in a bit more layman terms and really stresses the point. Um, 
No, if you see here um, in the second line, Martin has started off by saying a significant number of students develop the benefits of both options within their answer. This approach does not naturally lead to any evaluation unless they contrast the importance of two benefits. So that's what I'm saying. And that's what we were finding in both paper one and paper two. If people were doing that, then it's very, very seldom that they will get any evaluation marks. Um, and you can see here his recommendation, a better approach would be to pick one of the options and consider the pros and cons of that option and then come to a conclusion that adds extra evaluation. Exactly what I've just been saying. And Jonathan says it um, very clearly as well. Uh, when you, if, you, if you've read the uh, examiner's report for paper two, um, and it, 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 he starts using some bold just to make it really clear, use very similar language actually significant number of students simply develop the benefits of both options this approach does not naturally lead to any evaluation in exactly the same language as that it, that he's used um, and he talks about how it's really it's a tricky skill to master to to try and do that and that's what we've been saying for the past few years is that this isn't approach although i do know there is some guidance out there from external uh, organizations who say that this is the approach that you should take um, we, we can only say that as the, the examining team, that this isn't the approach we would recommend. Um, and I think he's, there's a frustrated chief examiner uh, in Jonathan's comments here where he says, as chief examiner, I have no idea where this approach has come from, but it seems to be a piece of baked in examination technique that some centres seem insistent on using. Sadly, this is significant to the significant detriment of the students. So you can't put it any more plainly than that that actually the better way, um, and he did just say in the second paragraph, there's never, there's never one preferred approach, but there's a safer and an easier route is to pick an option and consider the pros and cons. So that's myself saying it. You've got the Martin who writes and is the principal examiner on paper one saying the same thing. We've got um, Jonathan, uh, the chief examiner of the whole GCSE and the principal examiner for paper two also saying exactly the same thing. So that's the, the message we want to get out there loud and clear is it's the safest and the, and the easiest way. Although there are other ways, we can't stop people trying other ways if they want to try that approach, but it's a lot harder in order to lead to any evaluation marks. Okay, with that in, uh, I've, I've labored that point quite a lot there because I want to just try and and dispel any misconceptions that are out there. And I do read the um, the, the LXL WhatsApp group, and there, there's sometimes there's more and more people have to say how are getting the message, but there's still some out there who are um, sadly confused as to what the best approach is. So common mistakes that are made by students. First and foremost, it's inappropriate structure that leads to limiting evaluation marks, um, as well as looking at the advantage and advantage and advantage of the first option then advantage of the second option we do see quite a lot of pupils who and students who will look at the advantage of option one and then say however disadvantage of option two is xxxxx whatever it may be now if that approach is taken the fact that they've given a disadvantage of option two is just further for support for why option one is the best option but these students have clearly been taught that if they mention, if they give a disadvantage of the second option and they've talked about two options, then clearly that must mean that they're going to get evaluation, which is incorrect advice. <coughs> there must be some people out there saying this because it comes out or they must be reading it somewhere. I, I don't know where it's come from, but we see that quite often as well, unfortunately. And again, that's going to get no evaluation because you, the candidate then isn't recognizing that actually the chosen option does have a drawback also. Uh, the other major structure that we see that is inappropriate um, and limits the marks is um, where candidates have been advised or taught to look at the advantage and disadvantage of each option. Uh, and we sometimes get sort of a five paragraph approach. Now, although that's probably more suited to the 20 mark question at A level, it's not suitable for the nine mark question here. Obviously, it's, it is a method that you can still get nine marks out of nine, but
but you're going to spend a heck of a long time writing to be able to do that. Remember, we only take the eval um, the analysis from the best two paragraphs anyway, best two points. So in fact, that they're writing four points, four different paragraphs is wasting their own time. So at, at the very least, they're wasting some time that it could be spent elsewhere. Uh, but it tends to what we tend to get with when we see these types of um, structures in response in nine mark questions is that people uh, students just are simply um, don't end up having enough analysis and they end up in level two for analysis rather than level three. And the third one, which I talked about a lot, particularly in, in recent um, webinars, is a lack of context, a lack of application, meaning that we miss out on application. Really frustrating when you see some really good, well-structured answers that do look at advantage and disadvantage of the of the, of the same option with with a, with a decent conclusion, but then there's no application anywhere in the response, and you're going to end up at a maximum of six if everything else is done really well. But it's really hard to evaluate really well and put a good conclusion in when you, you're not applying it to the business situation. So it's more than likely going to get sort of five but the maximum you could score is six, uh, which is a shame. <coughs> so we're going to look at a um, at some examples. I've got five examples that um, I'm going to share with you today. Uh, they're all based on the, the Greg's case study from paper two from 2022, which was uh, section B in that particular paper. And the question we're going to look at is, is 6C that was out there, which was in order to continue its growth in sales, Greg's is considering two options, differentiate its product range and lower its prices. Justify which one of these two options Greg should choose. Now I've chosen uh, and that, uh, a question that was actually quite well answered on the whole for nine mark questions, because it was an accessible uh, question. So it was an accessible case study. All the kids understood what Greg's was and, and does, and they probably use and buy from Greg's. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and obviously the, the subject matter is something that, that is quite straightforward to understand. Do they differentiate their product range or do they lower prices? So it was an accessible question. So I've, the, the, I've done that on purpose so that you can then use these with classes, no matter what stage they're at, in their uh, in their GCSE, so that they are able to um, understand the material that, that that we're talking about as well. Okay, let's just have a quick look at or uh, remind ourselves of the mark scheme. So we get a level, and examiners are trained to give a level for each of the skill areas. <coughs> the way the mark scheme works, um, we are marking this in three skill areas. So we're looking at application, which is AO2, and they are um, the descriptors for application are the first bullet point in each of the level descriptors. Then we're looking at analysis, which is AO3A, which is the number of linked strands, really. Um, and although it doesn't say it in particular here, in, in if we look at level three, the middle bullet point, it says for analysis, deconstructs business information and or issues, finding detailed interconnected points, and as we've told you before, and I've labored the point quite a lot, the detailed interconnected points means they need to have five linked strands across a maximum of two points, two paragraphs. So therefore, uh, what, that's the reason why I say they should have three linked strands and three linked strands, because if they give six linked strands altogether, if one of them is a repeat of the question or if one of them is invalid, then they still have the five that they need to get level three for AO3A. That's what I do with the students that I teach, and I find it works quite well. Then the, the, the bottom bullet point in each level is about the evaluation. Um, and I'll, I'll put it into more, more simplistic terms for you. <coughs> Generally, if we have a stated balancing argument, that would be sufficient for level one. If we have a developed balancing argument, that would be sufficient for level two. And if we have a developed balancing argument with a sophisticated conclusion, that's what you're looking for to really put it into level three for evaluation. OK, with all that in mind, I'm going to stop sharing this screen and I'm going to start sharing uh, the examples. At this point, Colin, is there anything you need to ask or are we OK on the question front? Yes, please. Um... 
got three questions. Uh, one from Paul. If the marketing mix or an element of the marketing mix is being considered, do the students need to show that they understand all the elements of the marketing mix or can they just focus on the one that's in the question? They can just focus on the one that's in the question in this particular case. Um, now, I, I don't know what the question, I can't think of one off the top of my head that's focused on, it might say, uh, in order to improve profits, should they um, improve the, or widen the product range or focus on promotion, for instance, that could be one of the, the options. And if you just talked about promotion and the advantage and disadvantage of doing of, of, of promotion, that's fine. You don't need to show that you understand the other four P's. Um, next question is from Stephen, um, and it's really about inverting this. Can you demonstrate analysis and evaluation by making your recommendation what you must, what you shouldn't choose? In other words, so do the uh, benefits and drawbacks of the rejected option, not of the chosen option? <coughs> yeah, um, in the, do you know, I've never seen it done like that. In all the years that I've done this, I've never read an answer like that. Um, but I can't see why that wouldn't work. That would be absolutely, as long as it's meeting. And then and then you could go, well, actually, I wouldn't use this one. So therefore, I'd use the other option. And you can, and then you, I would, maybe in the conclusion, yeah, I, I, I can't see why that wouldn't work and why that wouldn't be rewarded because you're doing the same thing, but just inversed, as you said, I you think. I wouldn't encourage students to write it that way. Um, but if somebody did it, I, I would be inclined to reward it if they if they met all the other criteria. Yeah. I, I'm glad I asked because I actually get said the opposite. So, uh, so I think, Stephen, yeah, if you note Paul's answer there. Um, then, uh, I think they a, would have to, to make it clear which option they were picking as to get their judgment, as part of their judgment, because they have to make a judgment. So... I suppose if they're saying they definitely wouldn't use this one, that is inferring that they would use the other one because there's only two options. So, right. yeah. yeah. Um, now, there's a, a question from uh, King Quing about um, the use of I rather than writing in personally. So starting I think or I consider. Well, is that, that okay? Fine. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. fine. That's fine. Yeah, no, yeah, I think I've I've got some examples where they do that. Yeah, if it, it won't, they won't get my time. You could start off with they should use this, or I think they should use this. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely fine. Last one. Yeah, from good questions. Last one from Karim. Um, how much application is enough application in, uh, uh -huh. in, the, in the three paragraphs? We are going to cover that in the examples. So I shall move on. You will see an example. I have got an example of a of. I'm going to show you examples where they they might not have got evaluation, but they've got application analysis. I'm going to show you some examples where they've got everything. I'm going to show you some examples where they've got evaluation and and analysis, but no application. So you'll you'll be able to get a, a flavour. And if you if there's still a question at the end, Paul, then please hang around at the end, and I'll get I'll talk to you a bit more about that. Okay. Um, right. So. Oh, has Colin gone? Or have I, have I gone? No, it's me that's gone. That's you that's gone. Fabulous. Just checking. Right. Um, where is the uh, next bit that I need? That's wonderful. It's deemed to have disappeared. Hang on one second. Right. Let me just open that up. Here we go. That's what I want. Come on, Zoom. Here we go. Right. Hopefully <coughs> it's loading up now and you can see the examples that we've got. OK, so um, let's just move this out of the way because it's right on top of my pens that I need. Yeah. There we go. So I'm going to highlight it as we go. I'll highlight in green where the um, the valid point is made and I'll highlight in yellow um where there is any linked strands of development and i'll put a red box around anything that is considered as application so that that's the sort of color coding that i'm going to be using as we go through so we'll look at this first example i've got five examples i want to share with you 
Um, so this is the first one. I think they should differentiate their range of food to cater for more tastes. Now, in that particular question, they're not, they, they've made a judgment. Uh, that Not question, that particular sentence, they've made a judgment. They haven't actually given us a reason why, um, but there is some application in that particular uh, uh, sentence. And that's a bit about cater for more tastes. So I'm going to use that as application. Then we've got, this is because food like their vegan sausage rolls will attract more customer awareness. Okay, so there's the reason why. So I'm happy to give that as our valid point. Now in that particular point, you can see that it's contextualized as well because we, they talk about vegan sausage rolls. Now, if you've read the case study, it mentions vegan sausage rolls, but even if it didn't, it's still application that is valid uh, to the Greg scenario. So now what I'm looking for is, have we got any analysis from it? So I'll do the analysis first, if there is any, then we'll go back and look at the application. We've got some good connectives next as a result, which gives me hope. Greg's may attract more customers. Okay. I'm thinking, well, that's very similar to what I've just read. So I'll just hold that for one more. Attract more customer awareness, may attract more customers like vegans. Okay, what does the rest say? Who may not have bought from them before. Okay, I'm, I'm now seeing something that's a little bit different. So that's not only are they going to have, they're going to be made more aware to potential customers, but now actually customers are attracted to them. So although it starts off of being very, very similar, I'm going to give this candidate the benefit of the doubt and say, actually, with the, with the extra bit who may not have bought from them before, then I've got something that's slightly different uh, to, the, to the point. So it is, it, I'm going to give this as a first link strand of development. Therefore, sales may increase. OK, that's logical, which could lead to more profit for the food retailer. That's for the food to go retailer, should I say. And I think they probably put food to go retailer because they mentioned food to go market um, in the case study. So I'll award that food to go bit as context. And I'm also going to award uh, this vegans bit. Now, somebody asked before. How much application do we need in a paragraph in, in, in the answer to get level three? <coughs> the answer is really it needs to be throughout. Now, it doesn't need to be in every single um, sentence. The exam board will never tell us an amount, because if we said you need three examples of context, you could put those all in the first sentence and have nothing for the rest of the page. And therefore, it wouldn't be enough. So I, I the way I teach it to my students is I say, if you've got something in the, the start, the middle and the end of the paragraph that is contextualized, that shows that you're doing it throughout. OK, so that is a kind of rough guide, uh, which you can very clearly see with this. It is. We've got some at the beginning. We've got some in the middle with vegans and we've got some at the end. Then so we've got a decent power. Uh, we've got um, one link strand. We've got um, a second link strand and we've got a third link strand there. Then we've got another paragraph. They could also decide to reduce the price of products. So this candidate has decided to go down the route of advantage, advantage. So advantage of option one and then advantage of option two. So they could decide to reduce the price of products such as the chicken bake or sausage roll. Don't say why. So I have got some in there, some context, such as the chicken bake or sausage roll. This would make their food more appealing to customers who may not shop at rivals such as Tesco, Cafe, or Costa. So in terms of context, since I've got the red pen out at the minute, we've got food in there, we've got, and then we've got this whole bit about rival cafes such as Tesco, Cafe, or Costa. So what I've got there is a contextualized reason as to why uh, reducing the price might be a good thing. So I can still get analysis i can still get application although i'm not awarding any evaluation at this stage so this would make their oops i've just 
rub that out rather than highlighting, which is what I want to do. It would make their food more appealing to customers who may shop at rivals. Okay, then I'm looking for any more linked strands and we'll find that we've hopefully got some. As a result, Greg's may sell more products, which could lead to more revenue and hopefully profit. Okay, whether you separate that revenue and profit into one or two link strands um, is irrelevant in the end because we've got five. Then we've got in conclusion, increasing the range of products sold is best because they will attract different types of customers. This is a typical conclusion that we see time and time and time again from candidates. And unfortunately, it's not giving anything new. It's not uh, it's not doing anything sophisticated um, and it really is adding nothing, if I'm honest. So where we end up in terms of scoring for this one, in terms of application AO2, Okay, so in AO2, because it's not throughout, they had quite good application until they got to the conclusion. Then there's nothing in the conclusion. It's going to get level two. Um, AO3A, we have got our five link strands, so we're in level three. AO3B, there is no application. They've gone down the route of comparing two advantages. They have not compared the relative strength of those two advantages. It gets level zero. Starting point is to add up the levels, and then we look to see, do we need to adjust it from there? I don't think we do. I think this is round about a five mark response. Roughly half marks seems a fair result for that particular response. Let's move on to the second one. So in this one, we start off with, um, I think uh, Greg should differentiate its product range. So they made a judgment straight off. Why do they think that? Well, it's because it's been successful for them before. Because it's been successful for them before, like when they decided to sell pizzas, soup, coffee, and sandwiches. Okay, so they're saying they should differentiate the range. They've done that before. They were successful. It helped, helped them when they did that. And obviously, we've got some contextualization there as well. Okay, have we got some development, which is what I'm looking for next? We've got this help to attract new customers. Therefore, by becoming the first food really to start selling vegan sausage rolls, it would stand out further from, whoops, it would stand out further from competitors. The second link strand therefore will attract even more new customers who may not have shopped there before, leading to greater, or missing the R, market share of the food to go market. So we've got one, two, three, four link strands of development in that particular uh, paragraph. In terms of application, we've got vegan sausage rolls that we can uh, show it's contextualized leading to more greater share of the food to go market again we've got it at the start the middle and the end of the paragraph then we've got um a second paragraph they shouldn't lower the prices okay so we had an advantage of option one now we're getting a disadvantage of option two which is just really further support for why option one is the best. So I'm not going to be awarding any evaluation at this stage either. So they shouldn't lower the prices because it will take them longer to break even. Okay, fair enough. This is because the profit margin on each sausage roll will be lower. Okay, explaining why it'll take them longer to break even. So they will need to sell more pasties or pastries, sorry, rather, in order to cover the fixed costs of running the bakery shops. Okay, so we've got two further link strands of development. Have we got any contextualization? Um, we've got sausage roll. And we had pastries. And we've got bakery shops. Okay, have we got a conclusion? We have got a conclusion. Overall, selling to a wider uh, 
a wider range of customers by providing items like vegan sausage rolls that appeal to food to go customers that wouldn't normally use the bakery is the best way to grow sales. So although we've got some application, we, it's not really saying anything that they haven't already said. So again, we're kind of limited in our evaluation here. Um, they haven't really evaluated. We haven't got a balancing argument of any sort. Um, in terms of how this scores, application probably would be, have enough to squeak into level three. So, oops, I'm writing app rather than AO2, which I should do. I should do. So AO2 would give it level three. AO3A. I'm awarding level three. We've got the five. AO3B, we've got no balancing argument. We've just got further support for why option one is the best. It's a zero. So I'm going to give that a six. Okay, that's the rationale there. Rationale behind that is as well, you can think they've met out of the three assessment objectives, they've met the criteria for two of them. So therefore they should get two thirds of the mark, which is what they do. Paul, could I um, sort of interject with a couple of questions? Yes. Um, Paige has asked um, about food. Um, mentioning the word food as context, and Karim also asked, can you use the term more than once and be credited? So if you use the word yep. sausage roll or food or whatever, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, you can. What what they've what um, they've said in the past uh, when we put this to Jonathan as the chief examiner, he said that if they just continually using the same word all of the time, uh, then that would be capped at a maximum of level two if they had used it throughout. So you do need to use varied ones. You, you're not limited to say you've said that once, therefore you're not going to be credited with it again, but it does need to be varied to get level three. But you could use the same, you can award the same one. Um, do you, actually, I, I, haven't, I haven't thought that, I've just missed food there, didn't I? I've just seen one there, food retailer. Food retailer. Yeah, that would count. Um, I mean, following on from that, Andrew raised an interesting point that the word vegan, even if it was repeated, um, could refer in one sense to the customer, but could also refer to the product. Yes. Um, and although it was the same word, it wouldn't actually be repetition. Yeah, yeah, I agree. That's a good point. Yeah, very good point. Um, Paul has asked a question. When the linked strands of development move from this will increase revenue and this may, may, may well increase profit does that count as one or two linked strands it's i if it, technically it's two some it's it, this is where it'll, the you can make it really e you can get your students to make it easier for the examiners and you always want to make life easier for the examiners because they're more likely to 50 50 decisions to go your way um if the, just by using clearer connectives i think in the other example there where i said it didn't actually matter whether that's one or two is because it said it'll lead to revenue and profit if they had said it'll lead to increased revenue which potentially therefore may increase profit that's a much clearer separate link strand than just using the word and. So I'd get your students to avoid using the word and and use really clear cut connectives like, and therefore this will lead to something like that. And there, um, or therefore this will potentially lead to, because obviously with profit, nothing is absolute. Um, hopefully that makes sense, Paul. All right, thank you. Thank you. Right, um, let's look at example number three. I'm conscious of the time. Right, this example, um, we start off with, which, what have we got here? So they could differentiate, <laughs> excuse me. <coughs> they could differentiate its range as this would attract new customers, okay? Valid point. Uh, this is because vegans will be attracted to their new vegan sausage rolls. We've got a reason as to why it will attract news because they're attracted to the new sausage rolls. So we've got one link strand. We've got some context in the response. Okay, 
but only one link strand and then we've stopped and we've gone on and this is where your heart starts to sink where you see lots of paragraph lots of small paragraphs but this is the, the candidate who's clearly been taught that they need to put in more points than they actually do uh, in the second paragraph it starts off by saying however it could be really expensive to adjust production processes to produce this new product okay i'm going to take that 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 is potentially the case if you're going to start producing new products and you've got to uh, maybe buy new machinery you've got to change processes you've got to find new material new ingredients um so actually what we've got there for the first time is a bit of balance so i'm actually thinking that for the first time in these examples i can award some evaluation um which might mean that profits decrease okay they've jumped straight to profit which is again heart starts to sink but it's a, a potential link strand so so far we've got two paragraphs we've got a total of two link strands we've got a kind of stated evaluation we haven't got a lot of well-developed evaluation we've got a little bit of context then we've got a third point now remember we're going to take the best two so let's see what we've got in this particular in this third paragraph they could lower the price this is because the market is really competitive that's why they might have to lower the price so it'll attract customers who are price conscious there's the link strand so again we've got a point with one link strand this is clearly the candidate who's been taught to go advantage disadvantage or disadvantage disadvantage um, of each option remember they've got about 10 minutes 10 11 minutes to answer this particular question so they haven't got a lot of time then we've got a drawback of the other option however the difference between the cost of making pizza slices and cups of coffee will be much reduced the cost again a drawback but now we've got some context of some more contextualization in it Therefore, they would have to sell a lot more items to make a profit. OK, again. One link strand of development. Then we've got a conclusion. I think they should differentiate its range. And that appears to be it, which is adds absolutely nothing. So what we've got <coughs> is <coughs> we've got four points all of them have just got one link strand so the best two will have two links so whatever we look at it whichever paragraphs we use the best two paragraphs have only got a link strand in each so we're at two link strands of development so for ao which is always the easiest one to to look at i'll put the score at the top here we've got more room so for ao3a on this one we've just squeaked into level two just because you just need two link strands of development to get in now this is where it becomes slightly problematic in although not i, I say that but not really um how in terms of application have we got a huge amount well we've got two examples of application in the particular response um now what we would argue is that here if we put this as level two then we're saying we're, we're we're taking these kind of best two points here which are looking at an advantage of attracting uh, of differentiating and then a drawback of reducing the price so but we've also got the tiniest little bit of evaluation and um, we haven't got any have we got to get level two for evaluation we have to have developed balancing arguments now i would strongly argue uh, that we don't have that so i would go there now for me whether you argued this was level two or level one for evaluate uh, for application i'd probably stick it personally just into level two but uh, really just and this is one where i wouldn't add up the scores because it, even if you've gone for if you've gone for level two there, it's definitely not a five mark response. It's not as good as that because it's only just squeaked into level three, uh, level two, sorry, for AO3A. 
if you had gone level two for application, it's only just squeaked into there. So it's not really high in that particular level. So I would score this as a four. Now, if somebody gave it five, I'm within one mark. It's definitely not a six. If someone had given it three, I could understand why they would give it three. And this is where there's no, there's not always a definitive uh, score for these particular. It's, it's subjective. Level-based marking is subjective. What we're trying to do is to make sure we're, we're, we, you, that we're, we're herding the sheep into a pen and that we're all, that we, when we mark this as teachers, we would all be very, giving a very similar score for the same reasons. Now, if somebody gave it three and I thought it was a four, we, we could both stand our ground and we'd get nowhere. There's, there's arguments to say why it should be a four and why it should be three. Someone could then throw their hat in the ring and say it's five. So for me, it's making sure that in these level based markings, there are some that are, are clear cut as to what they should be. Then there are ones like this one where it's it, it, there is an air of subjectivity around it. And therefore, finding the most appropriate mark in your and, and being in the right ballpark is the right thing. It, we could sit and argue whether it's a three or four or a five for half an hour even longer some people would argue but so actually going in the middle and giving it the middle score of four is the most appropriate uh method to do and sometimes unfortunately in level based marking you have to do that you have to go with your gut feeling as to how it feels based on the the, the level descriptors that you've got um and m what the candidate has written you can't give them marks for things they haven't written so you've got to go with what what's written and some there are even people in the same department even us on the senior team we will argue marks but we will all but it, whether it's a four or a three we could sit and argue that and have differences of opinions because there is that air of subjectivity sometimes with these particular responses the key thing is this kind of approach is not going to score you very highly unless you spend a disproportionate amount of time in answering the question and answering it with a lot more link strands in these paragraphs which is going to then uh, really inhibit your time later on in other questions. Let's look at the next one. I think they should choose option one. This is because they will now appeal to a wider audience. OK. Fine. Therefore, they're likely to see more customers buying from them. Logical link strand of development which will increase sales. Now, some of you might say, well, that's just the same thing, but actually number of customers and value of sales is, uh, I could argue that that's actually two separate things because sales could mean the value of the sales. So we would allow that as a separate link strand of development and therefore the potential to increase profits, which could be reinvested to create even more uh, products. Then we've got a however, so we've got um, as long as they're now going to give a draw, just because they use the word, however, doesn't mean that we've got evaluation or a balancing argument. It depends on what they say. They do, however, say this could be really expensive for the business. So they actually have given a drawback of the same option. OK, so I'm going to award that. They will have to spend money developing the product and researching the market. Yeah, valid. Why are they, Why is it going to be expensive? Well, they've got to spend money developing the product and researching the customers and the competitors and so on. If they didn't receive many sales, this could mean they won't receive inflows of cash to pay for the increased outflows. OK, long winded way of saying it, but valid. Harming the business's future potential to increase their share of the market. Fine. So overall, I've got six link strands of development. Have I got a conclusion? Yes, I have. Overall, there may be competitors. Uh, so lowering prices will mean they simply copy. Uh, therefore, introducing a new product is better. OK, that's not really saying anything. So what we've got here is um, in terms of how we mark this particular one, what's absolutely lacking this time 
is application. And I just wanted to show you an example of this, I want to show you how that impacts their score. AO3A, we've got our, our five link strands, so we're at level three. AO3B, we've got developed balance this time, but we haven't got a sophisticated conclusion. So I'm gonna give that level two. So this is gonna score five. If they don't do put in any application, the maximum they will score is six. And I talked a lot um, in one of the previous uh, recent webinars about how many marks you can lose if you don't apply your answers across the paper and it's astronomical. Okay, so that was our fourth example. So here's our fifth example. So <coughs> this time, I think Greg's should lower its prices for food and drink. So what we have got is Although we haven't got uh, a valid reason why, we have got some application. Why should they lower the prices? If they decide to lower prices for items like coffee and bacon rolls, they will likely attract more customers. There's the valid reason why. So I'm going to highlight that in green. But I have got some more context in coffee and bacon rolls. Have I got any analysis? Why will it attract them? Well, it's because customers will now see these items as better value for money. That's logical development. <coughs> Compared with similar items sold at Starbucks and Costa. Okay, so that's, a, we've got, I'll go do the application at the end. So that's a link strand. Have I got a second link strand? As a result, good connective, good strong connective to put in. Customers will switch to buy tea and sausage rolls from Greg's. Therefore, good connective, clear connected to show you moving on. Greg's will gain higher customer loyalty. This will result in Greg's achieving a higher share of the cafe and food to go market. Lots of link strands. I've got one. I've got two. I've got three. I've got four context there's lots we've got in addition to what we've already got we've got starbucks and costa we've got uh tea and sausage rolls uh and the cafe and food to go market then we've got a however point which unfortunately stretches over two pages so we'll just be wary of that uh, however price reductions by greg's may be matched by other cafes such as cafe nero and others OK, so we're saying actually the downside is that actually others are just going to do it. So we've got some balance here. Now, whether we've got developed balance or not, we'll see. But we've got cafes um, such as Cafe Nero. This is because the food to go market is extremely competitive. So I've got some development. Why would they uh, match it? Well, it's because the market's competitive. So why would what? Why does that matter? So therefore, customers can easily switch between cafes based on price. As a result, other cafes will match any price reduction, so they don't lose out on customers. Got some more development. Therefore, any competitive advantage gained will quickly be lost. Uh, further development and they'll just be selling the same number of pasties and cups of coffee but for less money it's a long last part, um link strand development so actually i've got one two three four further link strands of development i've got as you can hopefully see we've got a lot more context we've got cafes mentioned a couple of times and um, we've got pasties and cups of coffee so <laughs> I know for AO3A, I'm at level three because I was at four link strands before at the end of the first paragraph. So this is an over-engineered answer, um, but just to, well, a good one to show you. And the reason I want to pick this particular example is because of the evaluation that came with it. So in conclusion, I think lowering the price is the best option. So they've given a judgment. I haven't said anything else that we haven't already heard yet. This is because customers choose cafe on value for money kind of repeating themselves at the minute. They haven't said anything new just yet. Therefore, it's vital, and I like the word, the use of the, that word, it's vital that Greg's provide good quality sausage rolls at affordable prices. Now, I'm highlighting that in pink 
because although it's it's kind of reiterating what they're saying in some way, but they're placing value on the argument. They're saying it's it's a really competitive market. Therefore, it's really crucial. It's really vital that they provide a sausage roll at an affordable price. And what really elevated up to level three is this next bit. However, how successful this is may be dependent on the size of the price reduction. Now, I always think this is quite a good way to, to evaluate, is to actually say, when something's changing, how much of an effect the change will have on something is dependent on how big the change is or how drastic the change is. So this candidate said, if prices of food and drink only fall by a small percentage, it may have an insignificant impact on customer numbers. I love that, the use of that insignificant impact. Okay, so we're saying, actually, if it doesn't change by much, no one's really going to notice it, and it's not going to massively, if, if Greg's put their sausage rolls down by 5p, are suddenly thousands of people going to flock to sausage, who knows? And they're saying maybe they won't, and then maybe actually it, it won't have as much success uh, as they think it would. And of course, we've got more context there, price of food um food and drink sorry it were, were in there uh sausage rolls as well so it won't surprise you because i wanted to give you an example that gets full marks that for all three that gets level three and this is a nine out of nine response um what i've given you there in this last one just as a, as a, a tool just to save you some time in the classroom is i've given you that answer uh, or the first two paragraphs anyway, as I, I've, I've, I've shown you this activity before. Uh, it's the same paragraph as, up, as, as this first paragraph here, but it has no context in. So it's a good activity for you to give your students to then ask them to rewrite the paragraph or rewrite the answer, but putting in application. So I just thought I'd give you that since I was, I, 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 re, I was using this example, I thought I'd rewrite it with you. So you've got an aid to use uh, and some resource that you can use in the in your class with your students. OK, um, I couldn't have timed that any better. It's five o'clock bang on. I've got a couple of minutes. I do have to uh, disappear uh, at five past five. Um, but if there are any burning questions, um, then uh, I'll, I'll refer to Colin now to see if he's picked any up in the chat. Got four. Um, first one from Paul. Um, Another, another Paul, not you. Um, if, they, uh, if they have personal experience of a brand, can they bring that into their answer? So they will possibly be Greg's customers themselves. So could they yeah. bring in? They can. Yeah, anything that anything that's not in the case study, but is still relevant about Greg's, can be still count as, as application and be used. Um, and a different Paul um, has asked about um, AO3B. Now, if they can get to level two in AO3B in the first two paragraphs, is that possible? Yes, it is possible. Okay. With, it, with a developed balancing argument, yes. Um, we once, and it, it didn't actually come out, and I'm, I'm giving away trade secrets here, but when we were marking it um, a few years back as, as a sort of guide for new examiners, um, uh, the, uh, Jonathan put out a sheet that said, actually, I, just as I told you it before, so level one would be sort of a stated balancing argument, really short balance somewhere in the response. Uh, level two would be a developed balancing argument, so a good chunky paragraph that's talking about the, the downsides of it. And then the level three comes from a sophisticated conclusion. All right, thank you. Uh, another question from Paul, this time about AO2 um, and the throughout <coughs> word. Um, let's say in the three paragraphs, AO2 is brilliant in the first paragraph, rather flimsy in the second paragraph, and OK in the third paragraph. Would that be enough for level three? I'd probably go level two because... Level two. Yeah, it, 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 it's hard without actually seeing it, but say they just put one little word in the second paragraph then it, is that throughout, I'd probably say it would be top of level two with if it was really good in the first paragraph and okay in the third. Um, but I'd probably say that was <coughs> level two. It, it depends on, on how well they'd used it in the first paragraph, but my inkling would be top of level two, potentially level three, depending on, on how good it was elsewhere. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and then one from Paige, the full mark answer didn't mention the rejected option at all. Does that matter? <laughs> nope. You can get you do you can get nine marks out of nine without even mentioning the other option. Um, yep. And lastly, um, Amy has got a question that she'd like to ask you. I don't know if you want to come off mute, Amy. Um, um, I'm sorry, Paul, it's a little bit off topic, but I'm currently marking um, paper two, um, the, the 2023 paper two. Um, and I've had a lot of students for the flow production um, question uh, put, put answers along the lines of um, it will. The impact is that you'll get a more consistent quality. Um, you'll get a more, um, you know, even quality or better quality. Um, and therefore, more trust, more loyalty. Uh, customers will be happier. I'd, I'd be wary of better. That. I would be wary of better quality, consistent yeah. quality, definitely. Consistent Lovely. quality, because yeah, they're going to be made to identical specifications. Because yeah. uh, so absolutely, that would be fine. Um, Fab, yeah. Yeah, you go into a McDonald's. I mean, it's it's slightly different, but you know exactly what you're going to get. You but you get a, a, a buy a, a bottle of Coca Cola. You know exactly what the bottle's going to do. It's it, it's that consistent quality. So, yeah. thank you. No worries, Amy. Thank you. Bye. Get through your marking. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Oh, right. Uh, I just want to say before I go. Um, huge thank you uh to to colin for helping me with that um i know he has to monitor and and, and see the, the, the chat scrolling away so it's really really useful so thank you very much uh colin and thank you in the for facilitating the event um this afternoon thank you paul it was a very useful session thank you um, I've just seen one, Paul Stella. You said, what's the purple coding indicative of? It's just me just showing where I think they're using um, good evaluative techniques in their conclusion. That was all. That's what it was, what I was uh, thinking, my thinking was there.